Hello and welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from three seemly countries across Europe. It is our 69th episode, nice, and I am your brave host, Fen. Hello, I'm joined here by Alessio. Figo, hi. Cara. Hi. Hello. And we're taking a slightly different format this week because <laughs> you only get to have one 69th episode of any particular series. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But first, we'll start as we like to do with the standy catch up. So, uh, Cara, how are you? Um, I'm fine. My pharyngitis has healed. So, yay for me and my throat. Um, and yeah, um, I wanted to tell you something. Oh yeah, right. Uh, today our um, graduate class um, had their Abi shirts. I'm not sure if other countries have this as well. Basically, um, when high school ends, when they have to get their high school diploma, so after the last exams, in Germany it's tradition that on one day that isn't disclosed prior, the graduate class kind of storms the school and messes everything up and uh, disrupts classes and basically does a big party for the school. Do you have something like that in your countries? Oh, well, uh, kind of, but earlier. Uh, we have it before the exams when there is an exam uh, involved. But Italy, as uh, uh, like the elementary, is divided in middle school, and it's actually a different school. So we don't have this particular way of graduating, diplomating, or something. But you have a way of finishing school, right? Oh, I, I, I'm wondering right now if I finished school or not. <laughs> no, yeah, what? of course we have a way of finishing school. Uh, <laughs> the fact is that there is a mandatory school time, like in every country, and that time goes up to 14, 16 years in Italy. But uh, those, uh, uh, those years are split in three different schools. So actually you wait until then but it's not the teacher from the elementary school for the first grades because we have five grades of elementary school then we have three grades of middle school and we uh, begin a new counting and so on so uh, i don't know why i finished trapped in this discourse uh, so we have yeah kind of, <laughs> kind of some celebration <laughs> but that's it <laughs> okay Thank you for that insight into uh, Italian school system. Yeah, we don't have anything, we didn't have anything like that in Wales. We just had a talk delivered to us about not doing anything because in the previous year someone had turned the fire hose on in the main block and water had flooded down nine flights of stairs. So ah. not allowed at all. Okay, yeah, so... Um, well, I guess, for once, Germany is not a boring country. Um, so yeah, um, we, we have this tradition and today uh, it happened. So um, there was like a big party in, in the schoolyard and uh, games being played and whatnot. Um, it was kind of stressful for me because I ran around, you know, making sure no one got hurt. But um, yeah, it's fun. That was my day. How about you, Alessio? Oh, well, uh, before talking about the uh, Italian school system, uh, I am actually involved these days uh, because I want to uh, buy a copy of Keep the Heroes Out because it was uh, an interesting Kickstarter. I decided to not back the Kickstarter. So I have now the option to get it from Late Pledge which is anyway get it late like before january 2024 or get it immediately at a similar cost uh, in a store so probably that's it but they will launch another campaign with expansion and stuff uh, in q3 2023 so uh, i'm just wondering if it's worth waiting i probably resolved that i will just buy the base game right now 
because of course you have to test the best game since you have the chance and then I'll decide later for the rest of the stuff. But Keep the Heroes Out is really interesting. It was uh, actually uh, suggested by a patron of our, which is Dario, basically. Uh, like everyone, I'm talking with, uh, ne 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 with the national, uh, with the connationals among our listeners, and uh, I got these suggestions. I managed to uh, have a play or two, and the game is real fun. And I think it's good also for kids because there are no icons on the cards. So I'm really interested. And then that's basically all that's uh, getting me involved because I'm just waiting for vacations because I need them. And that's all boring me. What about you, Fen? Every day is a vacation here on Vacation Island. <laughs> um, although we've had a few days of heavy rainfall in um, showers, so that's not so bad. Uh, as for what I have been doing, um, a seasonal sale cropped up on Steam, so I picked up Darkest Dungeon 2, and which is, of course, very different from the original Darkest Dungeon. I don't have to deal with most of the apparent teething troubles that the game had going through uh, early access and everything. Uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to play it for as long as I played Darkest Dungeon, though. Uh, we will we'll see. Um, but admittedly, the original Darkest Dungeon had a lot more uh, content by the time I got around to playing it. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I really appreciate the updated style. The graphical style looks really good in particular. Um, and the changing mechanics I've come to enjoy. I also picked up Pathfinder Adventures, which um, I'm, it has a mixed, uh, mixed uh, review ranking on Steam. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly why. I suspect maybe it's some people who expected one thing and got something else. But it was exactly what I thought it would be, which is an electronic version of the older Pathfinder content. Uh, I mentioned I really like Apocrypha um, in the previous recording, and uh, Pathfinder uses a similar system. It's got a lot of fun mechanics, so I'm probably going to talk about Pathfinder and Apocrypha a bit further down the line, because they're, they're too, too good to not do so. Um... I got Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo. In the Steam sale. Hmm. Yes. No, I got I got nothing uh, this time. My computer is slowly melting, so I, I don't get any video games. Oh right yeah, you, you want to avoid stuff like Planet Zoo then, where you can fry your graphics <laughs> card, uh, or Planet Coaster. That's very good for trashing your graphics card as well. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So on the whole, that's been it. Apart from uh, I have spent. A week trying to find some miniatures. Um, so a while ago, David uh, very kindly gave me a gift certificate to use on Forge World, and I picked up one of my favourite Blood Bowl teams, Nurgle. And then I put them away when they arrived because I was dealing with a, a commission, and you know uh, I didn't have time to paint any of my own stuff. Of course. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and so. I originally put them away in the office and then I tidied the office and cleaned a load of things up and during the process I just cleaned that Blood Bowl team away and I didn't put it with any of the other Blood Bowl teams um, and I just I have been upstairs dismantling and tidying everything on and off for like hours at a time I think I spent like 12 hours organizing stuff up there and I just couldn't find them until right now literally just before we start recording, I thought, hmm, maybe I should just check the Super Dungeon Explore boxes um, because they were downstairs and they have a bunch of miniatures in them. And the first Super Dungeon Explore box fell apart as soon as I opened it, which was nice. That's the original game, which is, I can fix it, it's just glue, but it's not a very well made box, um, in my opinion. Um, and there was no dice, so I opened my second core uh, Super Dungeon Explore box, um, and that one just had a load of spare cards and bits and pieces in it, and I was like, I probably need to sort through this and throw out all the duplicates, because who's playing Super Dungeon Explore these days? I'm not, because I'm not touching it till they finally deliver on the, the Kickstarter I backed, 
My first ever Kickstarter, Super Dungeon Explore Legends. I've gotten nothing for it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, now uh, uh, it's, it's not. It's still not the most aggravating Kickstarter, um, but it's close. However. Uh, I also have two copies of the Forgotten uh, Kingdom, I think it's called, the expansion. Uh, and I opened the first one, and I was like, oh, this has got an insert in it that I built. And oh, here are all of the like promo um, things that arrived this year for Super Dungeon Explore. Still in flat pieces, not put together. Um, I think they're from one of Soda Pop slash Ninja Division's other lines, I forget. Anyway, uh, I was like, okay, well, I guess that's it. And then I remembered there's one more Super Dungeon Explore box. It's the Mimic Chest <laughs> box. And I opened it up, and first of all, it was just full of painted miniatures just lying on top of each other, so I think I need to sort out a foam storage for that at some point. Um, uh, because otherwise, if you leave varnished miniatures in a box lying around, eventually they stick together and the paint peels off when you pull them apart. Um, you know, even though I can paint them better these days, I don't see the reason to repaint them. I've got enough to do, you know, move on to the next stuff. And, and that's where they were. So they are here now on my desk. Um, and I'm not going to paint them because I'm halfway through painting the Dwarf Blood Ball team. So I need to finish that before I paint those. But that's, that's what's been dominating my time when I've not been writing or, um, you know, reviewing things uh, has been entirely just sorting through boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff and going, I probably should throw this out. I probably should throw this out. Uh, maybe I organize this a bit better. Um, I found the third edition. This is the physical third edition dwarf death roller, which was really cool. <laughs> I, that Including, and I'm amazed at this, all four of the chains that hang off it has really stupid metal chains that like go off the handlebars and off the that, wheels and all of them are here and they're not broken yeah that, that was the metal uh, in two big parts uh, and the lower part was basically the roller and was like heavy like it could chink uh, a hole in your table if you dropped it yes yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> it's that one it's unpainted and i'm like i might maybe i'll paint it one day but i I'm, I'm waiting for the new forge world death roller to arrive because it matches the design of the original one so i'll probably paint that instead and uh, once the team's finished i'll pop them up on instagram um so yeah that's been my time furiously searching sorting through boxes but it also gave me plenty of time to look at all of the board games and I've got quite a journey to talk about getting to where we were. So let's let's get on to the whole thesis for this. So uh, we this is our 69th episode and um, we decided, well, first of all, we don't do anything special for any typical ordinary numbers. Forget that. We're not going to celebrate the 100th episode. We're going to ce celebrate episode 101, which... I'm going to tease that maybe we will um, follow the old classic Room 101 format and each it's of the us... the basic episode, yeah. <laughs> yeah, each of us present a board game that we would like to see banished from existence entirely. <laughs> Sent into Room 101 to never be heard from again. Uh, but anyway, so this is the 69th episode, so of course I posited that we should all look through our collections and put forward the least sexy board game that we own because everyone knows board gamers are super sexy and board games are really sizzling hot with all of those bits shaking around and rolling those dice and and all of that stuff and of course miniatures the most sexy part of any gaming ever miniatures Sample miniatures yeah. <laughs> tiny little people in various different cases of outfits so that's what I put forward, and um, we that's where we're going. We're going to go with the least sexy of all board games. Um, I'm hopeful that Alexis will join us a bit later, because he was supposed to also provide uh, his his thoughts and decision. Uh, we'll have to see. He's currently a bit tied up. Uh, yeah. And we'll get to it. So, I'm going to go... Which in turn. Yep, so I'm going to go last. So... Who, with you two, wants to step forward and go first? I'll just let the uh, seat a bit of silence in, then. <laughs> uh, no rush, you know, you just, just, I'll wait. 
Kara, you want to go first? Um, okay, so <laughs> I go first. Um, now, until basically the beginning of this recording, I had my pick. But then during the <laughs> introduction and, and the start, the fan kind of said something that made me change my mind because I had a, a second choice in case I wouldn't go first and someone before me would pick my first choice. So I'm taking my second choice now. Um, This is a mess. I love it. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, it's a German game. So that's already a good qualifier for, for not being sexy. And um, <clears throat> it, um, it plays in 1430. Um, it's called Lancaster. Uh, an English name? Yes. No, no name like Schatzenimmel or something like that. So it's Lancaster. It's actually, I, I really like this game. I got it as a gift uh, several years ago. It's from 2011. And um, it's basically a worker placement game. You play a lord, you have your knights, and you send your knights out to go to counties and spread your influence and maybe gain the most favor with the king and be the most prominent lord in uh, his unified England. And on the side, you also send knights to fight the French because that's what English people do. And, um, and that's mostly it because um, settled into this, um, you know, placing your knights, getting stuff, fighting the French is also this very not sexy component of voting for laws. And um, so each round there is a parliament phase where um, you have three new laws available and, and players, you know, vote on which of these laws they want to implement. And um, yeah, and uh, apart from that, you have uh, several knights which are represented by not miniatures, but of course, wooden blocks. Oh, that's unsexy. That's really unsexy, and it gets even more unsexy when you put stickers on them with uh, the numbers, so <laughs> you know how much they are worth. And um, yeah, so basically during the, the worker placement phase, you can kick people out of a county if you place a knight there with more power, and um, or if you place a knight there that has some... Um, how, how, how are these... Um, Knappe, uh, the, the basically trainee knights. Squires? Squires. Squires, yes, squires. So you also can, can send squires with the knight and each squire increases the power of the knight by one. And But you get your knights back if they are kicked out. You don't get your squires back. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, it goes around a couple of times until everyone is settled and then you get stuff and you vote for laws and kill French people. And um, regarding the question, is it the least sexy game in my collection? I want to quote Fen here, the English are the least sexy country. <laughs> in, so. in Europe, they are most certainly the least sexy country for sure. Uh, no doubt at all. I mean, let's face it, Brexit's the least sexy thing that happened since 2016. Let's say goodbye to our English listeners. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. No, no, no. They, they know full well. I am from <laughs> Cymru. I'm from Wales. And um, they're going to they're gonna get it. And they should count themselves very lucky that I didn't pick um, uh, certain games. Uh, also from Mathi Matthias Kramer, who, let's face it, uh, he, he's the designer of Lancaster. He's not somebody who makes a lot of super sexy games, although I am going to mention one of his games, which I eliminated from the list because it was too sexy. So uh, it's Queen Games as well, who uh, they do a very serviceable level of um, components. Like it, it's all very clear and understandable, but they do love a bit of beige. Yes, it's a very beige 
game as well, Lancaster. Yeah. I mean, it has green, but even the green is kind of beige. Yeah. Well, I mean, looking at it now, we can see that the green is mostly England. You can see a little bit of Wales. There's nothing of Cornwall, which is fine, because I don't think the court Ornish would be running to say they're the sexiest people in the United Kingdom, um, unless they say it in Cornish, in which case I wouldn't understand, but I'd respect it. Uh, and Scotland's cut off as well, and everyone knows a Scottish accent, um, a nice bit of Scottish brogue is very sexy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to say um, you do have the north of England, and that has some pretty sexy accents up there. A couple. It has some really bad ones as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I, <laughs> you've chosen knights. That's the thing that I'm intrigued in is knights, sir. Uh, Knights are quite sexy. So, like, especially if it's Heath Ledger in a knight's tale. Are they, tale. though? Yeah. I mean, after Game of Thrones, are knights sexy? Yes. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, I just play the board game. Um, so, I couldn't really answer. I mean, we could say for certain in Game of Thrones that kings are not sexy. Definitely. Definitely not. Absolutely. Um, I mean, except maybe the king in the north, who's kind of sexy. But um, anyway, so that would be the Scottish king, kind of. So um, doesn't work for Lancaster because it's the English king. Yes, of course. Uh, Lancaster is before the unification, I believe. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, it's about the, the unification. It's about the unification of England, but not the unification of the United Kingdom. So, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and conquest of the French crown. Um, how do you justify one of the sexiest languages being involved in your game and it's still unsexy? <laughs> because the way it is involved is it's being killed. Uh, I, I have to say that I wanted to promote the king is dead at some point, but the fact that there's a French invasion, uh, I eliminated it exactly for, this re for that reason. <laughs> you also have to eliminate it because two thirds of the factions in the game are sexy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, first of all, the, the whole fighting the French is a qu quite small part actually of the game. You know, it's even on the game board. It's like on the on the bottom right corner of the game board, and it's very abstracted. You you don't see the French. You just see your own knights, and see them dying, and get rewarded by the king, and and that's it. So, I think first of all, the French aren't very prominent in there, and secondly, they are fought. You know, and and war is definitely not sexy. Except for Sabaton, but mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I, I see. I, I was going to say what you definitely got to something that I I was looking at and thinking about with this that I'm thoroughly in agreement with you is that the the uh, king is Henry V of Lancaster, the titular Lancaster, and he is a decidedly unsexy king. Um, I'm I'm going to share one of my favourite portraits of um, Henry the Fifth in the Discord. Look at this oh piece of uh, flower of the English <laughs> oh <my> nobility. God. <laughs> I know, isn't that a sexy haircut? Just I'm the king, and I choose bowl. Um, for <laughs> for for viewers, or listeners who want to see, just Google image search. This is the first one that comes up for Henry V of Lancaster. Um, it's the most famous picture of him as well, um, and he 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 is a. Uh, <laughs> amazingly, amazingly, I, I his, cannot avert my eyes. <laughs> it's a very, it's fantastic, isn't it? And like uh, his um, Henry the Sixth is possibly even worse. Uh, although maybe better if you kind of like the slight Stephen Fry kind of thing going on. Uh, here he is. Look at <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Henricus Vi. Oh. I bet he was really proud of this portrait as well, which makes him look like he's sucking on a gigantic gobstock, but and his chin is disappearing into his second chin. Um, yeah, uh, this seems like a pretty like good uh, selection. We've got a good amount of beige. We've got a very, um, very unsexy country, uh, which I think 
Should we take a vote on it? Uh, is there any country in the EU or Europe, like our portion of Europe, should we say um, from the Baltics across as far as Portugal, that is less sexy than England? Uh, I will just nominate San Marino, which is a small state uh, with, inside Italy, because uh, there's... Cause because you yes, like a, a long you, a long river no, in the Eurovision Song Contest. So. You like picking on the little guy, do you? Yeah, exactly. I, I, I was gonna, I was going to say Austria might be a competitor. I can't yeah. even think of a board game set in Austria that's not war related though. So, uh, anyway, I mean, have you seen how, you know, you know, Austria. I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking clichés here. Okay, uh, you know, uh, maids milking cows, churning butter. So, uh, kind of sexy. And anyway, the cows are definitely sexy now. I apologize to any Austrian <laughs> yeah. listeners, by the way. Well, so, let's, yeah, if there are any Austrian um, listeners, let's just say, uh, you know, you've got Sigmund Freud. Uh, my condolences about that. Um, uh, but you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger, who, I mean, the, the dude has continued hey. to grow in, um, in his, like, he's become a far more sensitive person as his life passed on. Um uh, you got Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Yeah. Mm hmm. Classical music is sexy. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. So they, they've got some. Uh, and of course, of course, who could forget uh, the very important, uh, significant, and I think thoroughly unsexy Archduke Franz Ferdinand, uh, <laughs> whose assassination kicked off World War I. Yeah. Yeah. Which is totally sick. What? <laughs> that's not a. That that's that, that is of the two world wars. That's probably the slightly more sexy one, because people. I mean, if I had to rate the mm. world wars, yes, of, uh, based on sexy, on how yes. sexy they are, <laughs> yes, World War One is more sexy than World War Two. Definitely. But I, I don't know. World War Two <laughs> are the uniforms designed by Hugo Boss, anyway. Oh, oh, and Christoph Waltz is also uh, from Austria. Okay, yeah. yeah, Austria, sexy. Born in Vienna. So, yeah, I think we've... Uh, I tried my best to find something. Maybe maybe um, the Netherlands. Are clogs sexy? No. Oh, no. hang on, hang on. In the Netherlands, there's that famous uh, story of somebody sticking their finger in a dike. So yeah. that's obviously... <laughs> um, I don't think <laughs> that you come up with a much, much sexier thing than that. So, yeah, I think we'll stick... Uh, I vote for the English... I think Amsterdam has a red light districts. So, is that sexy or yeah. is it making it a business kind of all that stuff? I think it's unsexy if That's it's like a business voluntary. transaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Vatican. Ooh, yes. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that probably is unsexy. Although at least it's not sexy in a socially acceptable way, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, but okay. we've we strayed quite here. a bit. Let's get back to Lancaster a little. Exactly. So, so <laughs> yes. in order to play uh, during the first time you open the box, you have to stick stickers onto blocks. And I noticed because somebody uh, uploaded the sticker sheet, you get four stickers of um, this is a sexier version of Henry V. Uh, he's still not sexy at all, but you you get him four times extra stickers of him. I mean. Uh, thanks, Th thanks very much, Queen Games. Uh, oh my goodness, these what? What are these? Um, are these brown, to beige, brown tokens with the crossed swords? What do they represent? Uh, now you're asking questions. Um, got a, got a grill you. I, I'm trying to win this. Um, beige ground tokens with an X on them. Oh, crossed they are swords. for voting. Cross swords. Oh wait, no, no, those are um, the conflict cards. You know, they use use um, basically uh, cardboard tiles for cards. Okay. So on, on the other side of them, there is like the strength of the French army. Right. So um, they've taken cards, and cards are inherently a sexy game component, and turned them into. Tiles, tokens, which are tokens are not sexy. So, yeah, okay, that's uh, there. There goes my attempt to undermine that. And these castles are so unbelievably boxy. 
Like castles can be really yes. sexy. If I don't know if you guys have seen Castle Koch, um, which is north of Cardiff, uh, it's it's not a proper castle. It's a folly, just like Cardiff Castle is also a folly. Um, you know, they're like fake castles. Uh, but it is a beautiful, sexy castle that people pay a lot to get married in. So, very unsexy castles here, utilitarian. Um, yeah, I... Oh, and what are... Uh, are, the, are these... What are these white tokens? They look like the Michelin Man in the pictures, I can see. Wooden tokens. White? White wooden token things. They, as I say, they look like a vase or a round little fat person. Oh, those are the squires. They're the squires. Okay, cool. Um, all right, well, how... how Squires are a little bit sexy. There's always that uh, hint of danger of romance between the knight and his squire. But I guess if your squires look like this... <laughs> In the meantime, you, sh you should just imagine Kara rummaging through the box to find the, the components Fan is describing. So <laughs> it's actually quite difficult. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. So and 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 also, I want to point out, you know, there, there is like this political aspect with voting for laws and such. And for voting, you need influence tokens, and your influence is represented by beige cubes. Yeah, they really like, they were like, what is the least interesting thing we can possibly choose? And it seems to be beige cubes that sit in a beige tile to hold them. I mean, this isn't Hansa Teutonica levels of beige, but it is. Even the, they've even cut off the White Cliffs of Dover. They've re replaced the border around on the coastline with just brown cliffs, beige brown cliffs. I, I can tell you for absolute certainty that the um, the coastline of Wales there is not accurately represented. We have very few cliffs there, um, very few beaches as well, uh, mostly just piles of rocks. But yeah. Oh well, uh, Alessio, do you want to do a little bit of grilling on Lancaster? Oh, no, no, no. I, I am okay. I'm learning a lot here. So, <laughs> I, 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 I'm so... actually fine with that. I, I just, uh, I, I'll just go with you bashing or whatever. We find I'm not, I'm not bashing. The whole point <laughs> here is I, I, I have to decide, unless uh, Alexis manages to turn up on time, I have to decide, because we're not allowed to vote for ourselves, whether... Kara's is less sexy or yours is less sexy so I need to be yeah. an informed person I've never I've never even heard of Lancaster um, before so it's uh, obviously as I said Queen Games as soon as I saw it was Queen Games I was like oh this is going to be a contender I, I, I think <laughs> I think I have at least one game which is less sexy than that mm. but uh, I'll Oh, I can begin talking about it if you want. Not, not just yet. No, not yet. I, I, not yet. Not just yet. I would like to hear from Kara a couple of honourable mentions and why Lancaster won out over them. Um, and then we'll go on to yours. Okay, so my honourable mentions. I guess I have two honourable mentions. First of all, Monopoly. Yeah, and sexy. Because capitalism is not sexy. However, there are variants of Monopoly which are very sexy. But are no, they I'm sexy? Talking about the, uh, uh, if the if somebody put on the table sexy Monopoly, would you be like, ooh, this is sexy? Or would you be like, oh, fuck me, it's Monopoly. Where's the exit? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can tell you, uh, first of all, I just thought after, after what fans said about the English that Lancaster is a good pick um, because Monopoly was my first pick. But then I figured, uh, because I thought, no, there's nothing sexy anyone can find about Monopoly. But then I remembered I have this very weird copy of Monopoly that has like some plastic um, um, meeple thingy for the players. But then I remembered that most people, when they hear Monopoly, think of the cool metal player tokens. And those are pretty sexy. Yeah. They they are they, they are sexy and cute and you'll always find something to identify with and the best thing you can do for them is rescue them out of Monopoly, throw the rest of Monopoly away and give those tokens a home in a different game which has less sexy tokens. You could yeah. use them in so Lancaster anyway, because of... to represent your knights. <laughs> <laughs> as your knights, yeah. as, as, as your squires. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, that's because of these tokens, I decided, no, I, I stick with Lancaster. Also, and you made a good choice here because um, one of the versions of Monopoly is set in London, um, famously. And as much as I dislike London, I do have to confess that London is more sexy than the rest of the surrounding places in it, in England. Of, of course, Covent Garden is sexy. Hmm. Yeah. So, well, uh, okay. Uh, did you have any other yeah, and, d honorable mentions? Um, good night. Uh, other honorable mention. Um, uh, I have to find it so I said the name right. Catacombs Cubes. I think I've talked about it at some in some episode. Um, or I think we, we talked about some other game, like puzzle game um, and, and um, brushed catacomb cubes. It's basically, you know, you... Um, build a city and to to build a building you have to create it out of uh, you know tetris blocks basically in 3d and um so i i figured okay it's blocky and the theme has nothing really sexy about it and but then i figured well i mean building stuff in 3D is kind of sexy and the whole tactile thing. And so, yeah, I, I figured Lancaster is a better thing. Yeah, I think so as well. I was looking at it and immediately, uh, first of all, I was like, this seems like a good contender. You know, definitely I was seeing cubes, I was seeing tiles. And then I saw some of the characters and they don't have super clear pictures of said characters to be completely clear on them. But it seems like there's some kind of uh, suggestively dressed yellow wizardy lady um and, and yeah, a queen or true, a princess true. and she's quite young and then there is this bare chested um absolute uh, bear here of a, of a of a character look at he's even ripped his shirt and torn his um trousers i actually did not remember the character so so good thing i didn't pick it yeah yeah indeed and another one is actually yeah another one is it appears to be made of wood uh, and i think there's enough said there on a on a, a, a <laughs> character who's entirely like full wood all the time <laughs> all right all right next one yeah, let's let's hear alessio's pick then uh, and okay. spin us a story Okay, no, I'll actually begin with the story because, uh, you know, you put me in a lot of trouble trying to find an unsexy game in my collection. Of course, they are. I unsexy. see, so, yeah. yeah, you're a connoisseur of the sexy game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Understandable, so, you want the hottest, most sizzling red-hot ball games to play with your family. Exa exactly, <laughs> that's exactly what I want for my kids. So, uh, basically, uh, starting from that, uh, I try to be smart about it. So, uh, I, I decided maybe obsession for the Victorian stuff and so could be a nice idea. But uh, that's not the, that's the gen. The, the, there's a lot of stuff. For sex, there is which there is there, sexy. there there absolutely is some sex rooms in that game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are, but there are also some of the guests you invite to your parties, which are definitely sexy. There's one. There's that one which is a degenerate, <laughs> which is beautiful. So an absolute no. rake of a man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it so it could make it could not make the cut. So I thought, well, uh, let's be evil about it. Let's go forth. They are kids. They cannot be sexy. I'm, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because that's one of the things I'm as well say now. During my journey of picking, I went any game which focuses around children uh, and exclusively children that's not sexy it needs to be removed and i don't think any of us need Definitely. to go into why it is not sexy <laughs> yeah but that, that was evil anyway and i re also remember that fort as a, a cats and dog inspection and that is to be debated so knocking shaming and let's move on so after that, I uh, yeah, I was left with a lot of games which I uh, could find something good about uh, sex, their sexiness. So uh, I decided for a bit uh, about Carnegie because, well, it's offices, basically offices and traveling, 
but there's charity, charity is sexy, and anyway, uh, Carnegie was a magnate of the steel industry, and as we know from the Simpson, from that the Simpson episode, uh, the steel industry is sexy. So <laughs> uh, Carnegie couldn't make the cut either. Uh, there is also a game, and this pains me to say that, because I usually try to find something good to say about any game I talk about, even if I don't like the game, and that's like the social game, which is a game I despise, I utterly despise with all of my art, because uh, it's a mocking of everything I do for a living, and... Uh, and the game is also quite with a lot of glaring defects, but it was gifted to me, I think with a bit of ill intent, <laughs> but, uh, and so it sits in my collection because uh, I can't force me to remove it, but uh, uh, again, computers are sexy. <laughs> so uh, that won't make the cut either. I was left with the games one I found is the perfect fit component-wise and for the general theme. The other is perfect because when you think about what is a boner killer, basically, uh, you think about this game, which is absolutely perfect. So uh, I have to ask you a question. Uh, is it, before I do my pick, before I reveal my pick, uh, the rules of this context, of this contest are must the game be physically present in my collection now or is it okay to have it previously owned i disqualified a game that i think would have dumpstered everyone and i'll talk about it because it's not physically in my collection and i never have owned it but i've played it quite a bit so if you owned it and let it go I think that's perfectly fine. It certainly contributes to, I mean, you got rid of it because it wasn't sexy enough for your sexy um, family <laughs> board game collection. Okay, so I got I got rid of it, and that's the perfect fit to me. It's Fog of Love. Okay, Fog of Love, uh, the other game was Food Chain Magnate. I will just say that the components, the board is the worst of any game I ever saw and uh, there are wooden tokens which are pretty good but the board is terrible it's the trouble it's, is it's about fast yeah. food and fast food as we yeah. all know is a really sexy form of um, food <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't be so popular in America yeah of course so junk food is probably really sexy and that supple tomatoes and stuff those so, um yeah. all, all those uh mascots for various fast food chains certainly get a lot of uh, attention from the internet like <laughs> Wend wendy's obviously um and uh, ronald mcdonald i mean you might find yeah. him freaky and scary but some people do love a good clown um a bit too much but hey you do you <laughs> if the clown is consenting go ahead it's better than um uh, what's his name? Uh, Gracie? Is it Gracie? Gr Gr Grimace. What? Not Grimace. I was going to get to yeah. the Grimace, um, uh, Grimace shake, but hang on, I actually need to get this <laughs> right. Give me a moment. Anyway, uh, the Amborgler is pretty sexy too. Anyway... Uh, John Wayne Gacy, I was right. John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> John Wayne Gacy. He dressed yeah. as a clown and was a serial killer. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's not a sexy clown. If A game about John Wayne, uh, John Wayne Gacy, I think... First of all, the stone's on you for making a board game about him, but the second is, it just wouldn't be sexy. Uh, so anyway, I have uh, uh, this was about fast food, and I've completely derailed everything, yeah. as I am wanting yeah, to. Exactly. So carry on, carry on. So let, let's talk about Fog of Love for a while. I'm sorry I don't have it anymore, but I basically gave it away exactly because it was making me fight with my wife <laughs> so uh, that's it that's basically why I have the game the game is a beautiful game so the components are quite nice and that is possibly a downside here in this contest but the game makes you role play 
two individuals and uh, the game is very good about that because it has a male female version a male male version and female female version and you can choose when you buy it so pretty inclusive and that's fine and uh, that's great actually and uh, uh, the game makes you role play as two people who uh, fall in love and possibly fall out of love uh, you role play the entire uh, story, the entire romance between the two. You get uh, uh, three cards at the beginning of the game uh, um, representing your personality, and then you get uh, your secret relationships of, uh, objectives, and then you go on with your relationship, basically by flipping cards, which are terrible, terrible decisions, like the toilet seat uh, should be left... Uh, uh, I think uh, up. Down, there's a there's the there's, there's a, yeah. you you like this you like computers you like programming. There is a mathematically correct way to have the yeah, toilet yeah, seat no, in the no, house. I, I, it runs as follows: if there is an equal number of men and women in the house, then down, then the right. toilet seat should be left down. It should only be left up when there are more men than women in the house. However, at night before going to bed, it is the man's responsibility to go and put the toilet seat down so that anyone who pees sitting down doesn't go straight in there or sit you know and and get stuck in the bowl which no actually happen. actually i know but we are in a house with three males so that by that mathematical mathematical algorithm the solution should be to leave it up but uh, my wife doesn't agree and that is the dreaded argument <laughs> so that that's actually uh, a relationship killer i you know and uh, for my personal life, one thing which brought me... Uh, now I'm joking, of course, but uh, uh, if you are play with your, with your significant other uh, this game, you'll find some grounds to start a fight if you really want to do that. Uh, there is an expansion which which is the in-laws ex expansions where you could have the in-laws getting visit you or d directly go live with you and that's beautiful because I can relate a lot with a lot of the cards in that expansion. So <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's exact it's perfect. It's really the the game to end all relationships. If you play it with your significant other and your uh, relationship already has some dents, it is possible that your actual relationship would not survive. I'll make you an example. There was uh, uh, I don't remember uh, what was the what was the exact card that you flipped, but it was like, what do we do this evening? Like, let's go to restaurant, let's go tourism, let's go doing something. Okay, I'm a male in my 40s, so I decided to go to the restaurant, of course. Uh, my wife picked tourism. We had a real discussion. We, we got out of our characters and she began with, of course, you go to the restaurant, you never want to travel, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I mean, this game is very funny, is a game I loved a lot, but I found not a lot of chances to play it because I had to play it with my wife. It's fun to play it with my wife, but some sometimes it's draining. So I had to let it go. It's anyway a very recommended game, especially with friends. It's extremely fun to play with friends. It's basically a romantic comedy with a few with a few particular moments which don't clink exactly well. It has a lot of expansions, it's very funny and it's unsexy because basically playing this game with your significant other we will not get you late tonight. <laughs> and this is the, 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 the most tactful way I could put it. See, um, so that's uh, is a pretty reasonable uh, sort of starting like uh, thesis to put forward. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I have a question for you. Ha I assume you haven't played the Paranormal Romance expansion then, given you played it a bit and then... 
No, uh, no, unfortunately I didn't play the Paranormal Romance Expansion. Not either the Doom to Fail, because uh, that was too much. <laughs> well, um, first of all, it's actually adorably sweet, the um, Paranormal <laughs> Romance, where you somebody's going to die, and then in future playthroughs, uh, one of the characters you're playing as can become possessed by the ghost of the previously uh, deceased partner, and then the other player can become possessed by the other um, uh, deceased partner, and so they rekindle their romance from beyond the grave by uh, taking two very unhappy people and uh, stamp stamping over their lives, which obviously isn't very sexy, because, you know, um, consent matters, <laughs> consent is sexy, but it has a 6.9 out of 10 on Board Game Geek. Which ooh ooh that's a that's a number you don't want to see on your expansions when you're arguing a game Whoa, is unsexy. That was perfect. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Any, anyway, yeah, I didn't try it, but uh, the expansions uh, do a perfect. I, I, I remember the in-laws ex expansion, and that was I that was all I had, and it was perfect because really, uh, you had an expansion and you find some new grounds to fight. It's perfect. That's that the way. that's the whole point of trouble with the indoors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. It, you like you can play a whole bunch of different scenarios, and you can just play fog and love without ever going near the stuff that's going to cause extreme yeah. friction, especially if your partner is, um, you know, pro. Like it seems like your wife uh, will get a little too involved with. Not as much yeah. acting the character as actually becoming the character, and then being like, "No, wait, no, no, I don't like this in person." So that's yeah, I yeah get it. exactly. That, that it requires a bit of role playing skills, and by the way, role playing, I admit, it's sexy. So <laughs> this is quite kind of disqualifying. But I stay my point that relationship games are probably the most unsexy that they are there. I guess reducing relationships down to a set of mechanics. Uh, is He's unsexy. Not, it is pretty unsexy, uh, but it is interesting that you've decided to go with a game about relationships. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say uh, that Fog of Love itself only has a 6.7 out of uh, 10 on Board Game Geek, so that's particularly unsexy as well to be that close to a 6.9 and not manage it. Oof. <laughs> Anyway, the, the game is actually really cool and a lot of fun. I, I think a lot of the of the downvotes are probably because it is true that uh, if you don't expect to role play or to play in a determinate way, uh, you are actually in for nine, nine, 90 minutes of boredom or something like that. So yeah. it requires the, the right mindset to be played. If you can achieve it, is a lots of fun. And uh, that's basically it. That's my, that's my nominee. Mm. Yeah, well, I think it's worth um, acknowledging as well that uh, it, part of this game is in some of the scenarios you can turn around and become like a, a choose to be a heartbreaker, like dis yeah. sabotaging the relationship for the purposes of winning, which is that's that that's not cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can aim actually at getting a. Uh, no, I, I think you can just break the relationship because I don't think there's actually getting a divorce as a card because there's no mention of what kind of relationship there is, which is cool. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, okay, so I'm going to hand the floor across to Cara then because uh, you, you, you need to now um, convince me that Lancaster <laughs> is, is less sexy than Fog of Love. <laughs> Go on. Okay. First of all, the toilet seat stays down. Same as with the lid. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm completely opposed to your supposed mathematical. It's solution not my to the mathematical solution. It is. It it's is. Just in the, wrong. It is the mathematical. You know, let me finish. The math. It's the mathematical solution. This house is a toilet seat down all the time house. Yeah, so, actually, that's what hap what what happening in my house too. So it's the same, but math is actually proving right uh, the other uh, because uh, uh, people who need the the toilet seat up also deserve a bit of respect. So if uh, just by sheer number of times you need the toilet seat up, uh, in contrast as opposed to the number of times you need it down, 
and you can calculate the average if the matchup is three to one it will be reasonable to have it up you see this is where upon i'm no, no he, he, ca no. cara cara no. hang on i'm no. on your side no. stop talking me down here <laughs> because first of all here is the other thing which the mathematically correct thing doesn't take into account when you flush the toilet uh, there is a water in the bowl, and water has a tendency to uh, vaporize and spray when vigorously encountering motion. So as a consequence, if you don't put the toilet seat down before flushing, you can send particulate from the toilet up into the air for you to breathe in or similar. So the actual proper hygienic answer is always to have the toilet seat down. <laughs> Same with the lid. But... The whole discussion regarding the use of the toilet implies that you know how people use it. And that I find is intrusive. So assuming that a male urinates standing is not okay. Because that was kind of, you know, it's, it's bad for, for males who like sitting down and relaxing. Yeah, and then fair, also, fair point. Yeah. Even if a male urinates standing up, there are times when they have to sit down. Yeah, don't you have um, in Germany um, the term Sitzspinkler? I may have pronounced it wrong. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, but I, I can't figure out what it is. <laughs> so Sitzspinkler is basically, you know, someone who urinates sitting. It's it's kind of this... this uh, funnily meant uh, insult yeah um, same with Schattenparker someone who parks in the shadow or um, warm doucher someone who showers with warm water um, you know all these uh, we have a lot of these insults that that are kind of you know they, they, they are not bad insults and they all address this oh so you like it comfortable huh and um, and so yeah you know, if someone likes urinating, sitting down, they they shouldn't be, be called out for it. And so just keep the fucking toilet seat down and also keep the lid down. Okay, ah, okay Cara, I think you have all fair points, so I can concede the <laughs> argument. But I think that your intervention just plainly demonstrates that uh, this game, Fog of Love, is way less sexy than Lancaster. In Lancaster, no. you know where they poop. They just have a <laughs> hole in the ground, or maybe they have a wooden <laughs> seat on top of it. Yeah, but we had this debate. So, I first of all, okay, if, if you look at Fog of Love, and if, you know, if you look at the cards, they are not sexy. They, they are not beige. They are gray. And um, so I, I, I give you that. But um, I personally think getting to know your partner better is pretty sexy. And it seems to me like that is basically what this game is making you do. Yeah, it but makes only... you talk about things you wouldn't have talked about otherwise and learn new things about your part. Yeah, I should. And that is sexy as fuck. Yeah, I should point out that this is a side effect because you were expected to role play another person, actually. <laughs> I'd also like to yeah. say that uh there is no two ways about it fog of love has a really sexy graphic design yeah. there, there is virtually no beige in it and where there is beige it is tastefully used as an accent in color as opposed to slathered across every single component yeah cannot cannot beat uh, cannot beat grammar designs with that <laughs> And like these, this board with the personality dimensions, that's colorful, that's sexy. <laughs> so, so sorry, but no, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't defeat Lancaster. I'm sorry that it, it hurt your relationship, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm still happily happy. <laughs> I have to go console my kids now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, any rebuttals before we get onto mine? Because uh, obviously time is always pressing. I can, uh, for the sake of getting to your game, which is still uh, a big unknown, I can agree to disagree. 
Okay, so then let's bring it on to mine, shall we? I've got a little bit of a story on how I arrived on this. Um, so, as mentioned in the catch-up, I use this as an opportunity to try and find my Nurgle Blood Bowl team. I would posit Nurgle are not sexy, but Blood Bowl is. So yeah. we're not going to be suggesting Blood Bowl. It's a sport and sports can be sexy and it has cheerleaders. So enough done. Uh, so I started at one end and I basically went, OK, what's this kind of game category? Um, is the category unsexy or not? So I started in the far corner and... Uh, immediately I saw Bloodborne and I was like, obviously Bloodborne sexy. It's a video game. The internet's weird about characters in video games. I'm not going to type in rule 34 Bloodborne, yeah, exactly. but I'm pretty sure I would find something. So that's gone, um, which meant as well, I was like anything that's kind of a gothic -y horror sort of look. I'm going to have to knock that off the board as well. Like my father's work, that's even got generations in it. So the the players, the characters you play as are getting it on in between each like phase of the game. Um, I even <laughs> I even had to uh, knock Abomination, uh, the heir of Frankenstein, off the list. And that was a high contender for a bit until I thought about it. And I was like, uh, you're, you're actually creating life. So uh, you may be making it out of dead bodies that you've stolen from Morgan people you've murdered in an way, but you're still creating something. And more importantly, Frankenstein does have, you know, as a novel some of that bright of frankenstein so i was like okay basically i can't do horror likewise i can't do existential cosmic horror because it's full of tentacles and japan is a country so yeah that yeah. was off the list as well <laughs> yep and i also went as a consequence i can't really do aliens either um because aliens have that whole kind of shtick going on with the exception of star trek I will posit that Star Trek is pretty unsexy. It, it, that isn't actually a negative. It's very utilitarian, but they all wear jumpsuits and they're very prim and proper. And I wouldn't be surprised if new members of Starfleet are made by, you know, uh, a form signed and a deposit left somewhere. You know, you know, you know that the the old saying that Captain Kirk uh, went basically get it on with uh, basically all the galaxy. Yeah, I don't think a rake is sexy. So uh, anyway, <laughs> on, on a whole aliens, alien abductions, I was like, OK, I'm not going to completely rule out aliens, but uh, they can be unsexy. Um, like the titular alien, a.k.a. The xenomorph, very unsexy. Sexual, but not sexy. Uh, so I was like, OK, aliens, probably not. Uh, then next up on my list was um, Scandalo and the networks which live together. And I was like, well, TV shows sexy can't do anything about that it's gone scandalo is about journalism which can be unsexy but it's specifically about uh that kind of you know paparazzi journalism so yeah that that's no good so uh that wiped out a whole load of things um war of whispers and agents of schmirsch um maybe think okay well it can't be spies spies are sexy that's I, no, that can't be debated at all. Uh, Forgotten Waters, I saw that next. I was like, okay, pirates. Pirates are sexy. Can't can't have anything with pirates in. Um, and then I saw Descent, and I was like, that's high fantasy. And while Descent itself is pretty unsexy in the way it presents everything, fantasy as a whole is inherently sexy in many different ways, so it can't be fantasy. Um, then I got to... Uh, Rome and Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Greece. And I was like, well, obviously that's just, that's wow. gone. That's that's a sexy period of history, you know. The Romans yeah, and the Greeks the really, beauty. they knew how to party and they knew how to have a good time. Um, Dungeon Degenerates was a... Sexy. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the trouble. I was like, ooh, it's got an unsexy art style. But then I was like, no, wait, this is like, this is from a punk. This guy is an anarchist. That is sexy. So no, no. Fury of Dracula, obviously not. No. Va <laughs> vampires, super sexy vampires. Um, the Thing got very high up on my list. It's an alien that is definitively very unsexy. It doesn't do anything sexy at all, even though it's got nasty tendrils and all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, so that was that's an honourable mention. Um, Power Grid was in the contention for a while. Because are engineers sexy? No. 
Uh, what? what? Uh, no, <laughs> no, engineers are not sexy. My dad was an engineer before he retired, and none of the stuff he ever talked about doing his job was remotely sexy, uh, except I suddenly remembered um, the game has you lay in pipe. So I was like, okay, right. Anything with pipes on it, I can't have. So that also got rid of Galaxy Trucker. Even though they're sewer pipes. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, and trackers are sex anyway. Yeah, it, it got rid of um, Curious Cargo, which is such a frustrating game. Otherwise, I'd be like, it's unsexy, but you're putting pipes down. Uh, Dead of Winter. Um, it has some very unsexy elements in it, but ultimately I was like, I can't, I can't really put it on the list. Oceans, the Japanese again, that's why Oceans isn't on there. Um <laughs> That brings me to Tiny Town, Turtles, Everdale, um, <clears throat> anthropomorphic characters. Um, while being a furry is not necessarily a sex thing, for some it is a sex thing, and more importantly the general perception is that it is a sex thing, so any anthropomorphic animals, nope, no chance. Re that remember mm. our talk about uh, Libertalia. Yeah, exactly. Libertaria, yeah, it, it just gone. No, no chance at all. So that was a. Um, but nestled next to tiny towns was one that's really got high up on my list, and that's holding on the troubled life of Billy Kerr, because a t nursing for a terminal patient as a board game is pretty unsexy. It's a it's a tough play. I keep meaning to talk about it, but it is is depressing. Um, so yeah. no. <laughs> That's uh, a punch to the what the fuck? Yeah, yeah exactly. it's a, it, it's not a super super great board game, but it is a really like it's it's a hell of an experience to have, um, and you need the right people to play it with. Uh, so it was like bubbling near the top. I was like, oh, that's that's quite high up. Um, then we had terraforming Mars or on Mars, a Mars expedition, and I mean, I was like, oh, Mars terraforming Mars is a harsh environment. That's kind of a pretty unsexy thing to be doing. And then I remembered that Mars uh, is, um, that's the symbol for the men. That's the male symbol, the Mars symbol. Yeah. And also Mars slash Aries was a quite a philanderer. He really got around. Also space travel. Hello, space travel is pretty sexy. Space travel is pretty sexy. So yeah, uh, that put all the science fiction out of the window. Um, I... Rescuing cats in Isle of Cats, nature preservation, too sexy, obviously. Preserving the natural world is sexy. So, uh, the, um, uh, Bri uh, uh, Brian Boru, that's the Irish, enough said. I can't really consider that at all. <laughs> uh, Flam Rouge, uh, cyclists wear tight shorts, so nope, and not a chance. <laughs> um, I did hit another one I quite liked which I thought's a good contender, and it nearly got there, and that is on the underground. Because trains, and I, there's an exception, I'll get to it, trains are fundamentally unsexy, except when they go in and out of tunnels, and then they are horrifically trains sexy. Trains are, are, are a metaphor. Yeah, yeah, they are. But on the underground is set exclusively underground. So you don't, you're in tunnels all the time. You're not going round tunnels. And the London Underground, and it also has the Berlin Underground, they're very unsexy. They're, they're functional. They do great work, but you don't, uh, you know, you don't reminisce about how beautiful it is uh, to take a ride on the London Underground. A train ride, sure. A train ride through the countryside on a steam train, that's sexy. But anyway, so I was like, oh, you know, engineering travel networks. That's kind of getting towards something. Uh, and I, my one of my honourable mentions is going to have that. Uh, right, uh, Rococo. Which, that's um, a Kramer game. Uh, I disqualify because it's fashion, and fashion is sexy. Mm -hmm. Looking good is sexy. So, uh, nope. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Aloy, enough done. Gone, not allowed. Um, decorum was originally, I thought about, because it's basically about decorating um, your house uh, with your partner. Um, and, you know, you have to... But, uh, but ultimately, it's about compromising and finding all the elements everyone wants into the house. And I'm like, well, that's a relationship compromise. That's sexy, so can't really have <laughs> that. Uh, anything to do with Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings is, like, fundamentally the least sexy of all fantasy out there. I, I, you know, it has some romantic elements, but it's not sexy. So War of the Ring, no. The War of the Ring card game, no. Um, Tsukuyumi, it's war. I was like, no. 
war war is like unsexy but like some things glorify war so Sukuyumi was bubbling there I'm like is it but then I remembered people play it competitively and no offense but being competitive with war games isn't sexy it's a good thing it's a cool thing I like it exists but I'm not going to be like man that's sexy um uh final girl inherently uh you know kind of uh, it's it's horror it's slash horror there's always sex linked into those i thought i was onto a good one with um, dinosaur island but then i remembered that you're making new life and i was like oh okay yeah that's like obviously a bit sexy um uh superheroes can't have them too sexy monster hunter it's all about being fashionable and sexy had to throw that one out um paperback was quite a high contender like uh but reading it is actually sexy so i had to uh, not include that as well and and so on and i could continue even further but uh, just to briefly summarize a few things madara uh, i struck because succubus publishing's um slogan is stay stay sexy and they have a succubus yeah Yeah. i I struck doom off the list because doom guy and uh, it has an incubus in it so uh nope oath sworn was a pretty high contender uh i don't think there's much that's sexy about oath sworn except how good it is, so I couldn't um, let it be on the list for that reason. Uh, Crime. Crime is sexy. Sherlock Holmes isn't sexy, so I was like, maybe Sherlock Holmes consulting detective, but then I realised, no, no, I can't. I can't uh, exclude it because the BBC series made Sherlock sexy. They made a fundamentally asexual character sexy, and so I can't really have that. Um... And that's most of the categories I went through. Egyptians, again, they're quite sexy. Uh, not really the case at all. Can't can't have that. Um, and so I narrowed it down to a few contenders. And here's here's some of the honourable mentions before we get onto it. Uh, Binding of Isaac, the uh, as a whole, um, you're a young child, so that's like struck off for the same reason that Fort was struck off. It's also heavily features poop and blood and religious tones and everything so uh that was a no at, at the end of it all cosmic frog yeah very, very high sexy. contender but it's unsexy but it is kind of sexy when the frogs start punching each other like there's that <laughs> that gladiatorial aspect to it which i was like okay um great western trail we already mentioned cows being a bit too sexy so uh, and maracaibo same problem mm-hmm. uh I thought about, this is why I excluded space travel from my list. Space travel uses rockets. There's there's nothing more like inherently phallic in the entire of human design outside of the phallus itself than a rocket. <laughs> like, it is piercing the heavens to deliver its cargo to a virgin planet elsewhere. It's inherently stupidly sexy. Um, so I was down to three things. Uh, abstracts and two others Uh, I decided to not go with an abstract game because some of them use rings and balls and sticks and rods and things so it's a a bit sexy Uh, and that left me with two options um, I also like to say I briefly struck I struck Vikings off because uh, they're a bit sexy. Um, Come on, yeah. yeah. Villains, villains, sexy as heck. So villainous out, um, and so I was left with Uwe Rosenberg. <laughs> right? Okay. Born answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that he makes pretty unsexy games, but a lot of them are about farming. Uh, or providing for your family, which is inherently a bit sexy. So I was like, okay, so Uwe made like third place on my list. Uh, second place uh, is a game that got excluded because I don't own it, uh, but I have played it a few times. Um, it is The Cost from Armando Canales. Oh, it's yeah. A, it's cost. a yeah, It's a mining game. Mining sexy, we know that That's because Zoolander like. showed it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm telling the story. Thank you for jumping in. Oh to, yeah, yeah. No, my I, narrative. I loved it. Yeah, my, sorry about what that. I, yeah, what I wanted to go to is it's a mining game, which you know is inherently um, mining sexy. Zoolander showed us mining is sexy, but mining asbestos is as unsexy as it goes, and you have a player board with coffins on it 
where you can end up killing your workers and they go there and they sit there and remind you of what you have done to try and win this game. It is inherently just, I can't think of anything less sexy than the cost, but as I say, I don't actually own it. I keep meaning to buy it, um, but it's one of those aspirational games like uh, Freedom the Underground Railroad that keeps on going out of stock as soon as it's in stock, so I never managed to get it. Uh, so I got rid of it uh, from my list, and that leaves me with one final game. And in my opinion, not only is this an incredibly unsexy game, it's also the point where this design studio peaked. It's from Awaken Realms. Hmm. Yeah, it yeah. is This War of Mine. Which okay. is about yeah. war, but does not glorify war one bit. Instead, you play people in a war-torn city, desperately trying to survive from one day to the next and get enough water, food, and everything else to jury-rig together ways of surviving. And every other person you run into is potentially a horrible situation for you, where they might try and kill you or take all of your... Uh, all of your hard-earned supplies you have to make decisions about who's going to live without water uh, who's not going to have a meal tonight and who gets to sleep on the floor instead of the one bed that we've managed to make it's grim it's unpleasant and it also puts its darn rules inside its script book so you never know where some of the rules are because you keep forgetting and not knowing where the rules are, I think is fundamentally super unsexy. This is a really good game. I think this is the best game I've ever played from Awaken Realms. Um, but I, uh, it, is, it is miserable. It is hard. It is grueling. And characters die in board games, but they die really slowly in this war of mine. You can look at somebody and be like... You're probably dead, but it's going to be a few days before you're gone, and that sucks as you die from some kind of horrible illness or infected wounds or gradual starvation. It, that's my pick, and I think uh, as well, um, you know, given the modern circumstances we're dealing with, there's this as a reflection of some people are really living in this world right now, uh, and that is my pitch for the um, least sexy board game. But I will concede it has really sexy components. Yeah, that, that's what that, that, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So uh, now it, tear down my uh, my suggestion. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, first uh, I could never have thought of this war of mine because I don't have it in my collection, so that blindfolded me. Yeah. Uh, cannot argue really with what you said, and I followed basically the same thought process, but the components in uh, this war of mine are probably the best among the games we quoted here. So I disagree. Yeah, you think that Fog of Love is better? I think Fog of, Fo yeah. Fog of Love's physical design is unparalleled in the three we've got here. I've definitely got better design than um, than Lancaster, that's for sure. But yeah, I, uh, Lancaster was not the competitor. I, I would <laughs> I would put Fog of War on the wall. It looks so nice. <laughs> yeah, Fog of War is a beautiful game, but I I just played this war of mine i remember it as a haunting experience so I, I don't really want to discuss the inherent merit of it being here uh, but the components i remember they were beautiful it was a pleasure to play with these components yeah it does look very nice um okay well i guess it's time for us to make our decisions um, and as Karaj, do you have any further comments? I, I think your pick is unfair. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I feel that if I argue that anything about this game is sexy, I'm a bad person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he got you in a bag. <laughs> and, and for the listeners, I am the person who suggested this. I did not have this in mind when I suggested. <laughs> I was more thinking, actually, Fort was quite a front runner for a while. 
um, for definite, but I think the mechanics in Fort are super sexy, even if the actual subject matter uh, is as unsexual as you can possibly imagine. Um, so I didn't rig this game to win, but I would I'd happily do this again uh, if somebody else wants to suggest a um, a category topic to put things forward. Because honestly. I really enjoyed hearing about Lancaster and I'd forgotten about Fog of Love because um, we haven't played it for a while, not since our our characters died and then came back to life. So uh, No, it, it's totally fair. I mean, it's yeah. it's fair. It's a fair pick. It's just, it's unfair. <laughs> it's okay. legit. Let's say it's legit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll cast my vote. It is out of, between Fog of Love and Lancaster. It's got to be Lancaster. Um that like beige is that it, it this the design that tips it for me. I get why you can have some unsexy experiences with fog of love, um, but also as Kara said, it's about two people getting to know each other, and that can be very sexy. Um, <laughs> and so that and the design tips it ahead for me. And also, look, look, just to remind you, look look at Henry V. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, go look at Henry V. In- incredible i i kind of love that picture i would like to gift a nicely framed version of that picture to someone who i didn't like um be like this is my favorite english king and then hopefully be around like oh where wherever where's henry the fifth's portrait i'd have to have another look at it i don't have one in my house okay. so my vote goes for lancaster Okay, let's say this right now. If we ever do a Patreon pledge for $50, we will ship a framed version of this portrait. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's going to have them lining up all the way around the block. I'll cover for the extra expenses. (laughs) Yeah, I'll cover for it. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, and and maybe we can have a a tier above that for Henricus Vi and his. Com- he he looks like Stephen Fry if Stephen Fry had no jaw. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so I I guess you're both voting for this war of mine. Yeah, we can we can yeah. uh, no we can uh, give the war to this war of mine. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. As soon yeah. as I didn't spot it on the shelf until this morning when I was lamenting that I didn't have the cost and I felt like I couldn't put it forward. I think the cost would have beaten this war of mine. Um, yeah, the, the cost is is actually uh, I saw a playthrough uh, in the podcast uh, with the one with Space Beef. It was uh, yeah, haunting. It was. <laughs> it, it, it is. Yeah, it's it's brutal because it uh, characters die in this war of mine and they die quite horribly, but they don't die of your own choice and decisions of asbestos, which is a really yeah. awful way to go. You don't you don't kill them to win. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So uh, there we are. Uh, I think we can officially declare the cost the overall winner, <laughs> uh, which makes us all losers. But I'll take second place with this war of mine. Um, and uh, Lancaster gets a third place because Fog of Love made the wide de- wise decision to avoid beige. Um. <laughs> Any, anyway, I, I was happy to be able to talk about the Fog of Love. Yes, it's, so, it's a fun yeah. game to talk about. It really is. It's unique. It's very, very unique. Um, and with that, cold shower means this is all we have time for in this episode. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash the last standy on whatever podcast app you like to use to listen with. And until next time, we have been The Last Standee. So it is a goodbye from Alessio. Nice. Cara. <laughs> das war gut. And myself, Nice. That one's for Audrey. And the second E in Standee is for the least sexy nation in the world, the English. <laughs> I would have bet erotic, but okay. Thank you.